Hey guys, it's your Careers, and welcome to my review for episode 8 of season 6 of Game of Thrones. It was truly an I.S. Dark episode, if I've ever seen one, which we have. But, you know, this one was next level I.S. Dark. So let's just cover everything else, and the world just... I'll just go ham on IS Star. On what happened with I am this episode. So let's start with King's Landing and Cersei. He, she was approached by the seven members of the uh, Seven Sparrows. Seven of the High Sparrows. I guess Lower Sparrows or Little Sparrows? I don't know what he calls them. Or maybe they're just sparrows. I don't know. I don't know. They, they don't make it very clear. Or if they do, I don't pay much attention because the King's Landing stuff is really boring. And Cersei, he has outlived her pur purpose. Really, I mean, I kind of feel like she should have been killed when. Tyrion killed Tywin. I feel like maybe he could have killed her too to, you know, completely wipe it out. But then again, if if he had killed old Cersei, I guess then he wouldn't have had to leave. Maybe I, I don't know, but yeah, Cersei. He is approached by Seven Sparrows, including uh, Lancel Lannister, her, and uh, we get the line from the promos, or your men step aside or there will be violence, and Cersei's like, I choose violence. And then one idiot swings his, you know, stupid thing at the mountain gets it stuck in his armor and at that point I'm like that dude dead that dude dead and yes well oh we, we already knew he was dead because in the promo for the episode it showed the mountain ripping his head off which is exactly what the mountain did so yeah dude lost his head the air sparrows they turned tail and ran because, you know, they just saw a guy get his head ripped off. And then Tommen, I don't know, later in the day, maybe the next day, I don't know, I don't know when it is. He announces when Cersei's trial is going to take place. Loris is also going to have his trial on the same day. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. And yeah, he banned trial by combat, so no game bowl, no hound versus the mountain. I'll get on to the hound in a minute. And uh, yeah, Cersei, he is screwed, pretty much. I don't know how she's going to get out of this, but obviously we're going to have to wait two whole episodes for those people who care to even find out what happens. Because next episode, I can see being all in one location. Just I just have an inkling by the title of the episode, and I'll get into that more in a minute. But, yeah. So, Cersei can't call on a trial by combat. And, and Kyburn's like, I checked out that rumor, and yeah, we can do that. Or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. I, I don't, I really don't care. King's Landing. It, it's just, I, I generally turn out. I just, like, ugh, this crap again. Just kill Cersei, Game of Thrones. She's outlived her purposeness. 
Seriously. Hey. She's more obsessed with having her claws around the Iron Throne than Danny. Hey, who I will get on to in a minute. So yeah, that's everything that happened in King Landing. Let's go from one Lannister to another. And uh, the siege at River Run. Mm. Jamie, he, he lets Edmure Tully, he who's the Tully who married the Frey at the Red Wedding, and then got captured after the Freys and the Lannisters and Bolton slaughtered everyone. Hmm. Hmm. And after he set, and he sends Emir into the castle, Emir er, orders everyone to throw down their arms, give up the castle. Well, I don't know how many people died, but we know the Blackfish died. He refused to leave with Brienne and Pod, saying, "You will do who better." You will serve Sansa better than I could, which I don't know. They didn't say how many, if any, men the Blackfish killed before he died. I'm I'm hoping that he at least killed a few, but the game, but the episode didn't acknowledge anybody being killed by the Blackfish before he could kill them. And the fact that Edmure is still living is kind of confusing. I thought for sure he'd be dead. So maybe he's going to die in episode 10. Like, I mean, the fact that they brought him back after not seeing him for three whole seasons. And they're not going to kill him? Yeah, he, he is Fucked. He is dead. He's. It's just. It's inevitable. It is. It is. Osha came back just to die, and and a lot of characters have come back and played very little roles. Thing, and it looks like the Hound is gonna stick around. And let's go to the Hound, who slaughtered a few who the men from the. Brotherhood without banners, and he caught up with the three he was looking for. Her after her telling the guys he killed that they were shit at dying, <laughs> which just made me laugh because it's so oh, hysterical. Like the considering the hound was at one point literally begging in a what. Eight-year-old girl. I don't know how old I is supposed to be in the yep, in this show, but you know, however old she's supposed to be, he he was begging a girl to kill him, a little girl. And I know I is supposed to be a badass, and we'll get onto that in a minute. But still, well, that doesn't exactly say good at dying. He couldn't do that fucking proper. So he finds the three he was looking for, including Lemon and Lemon Cloak, uh, who are about to be hung by Beric Dondarrion. Hmm. Hmm. And after some negotiating, hmm, the Hound gets to kick the stump out from underneath two of the men he chose. He chose uh, Lemon and Lemon Cloak and the guy right next to him on the. Um, on his right, you know, depending on what side, you know, you're on of him, I guess. Like, if you're, like, if he, like, I guess, if you're standing behind him, it's his left. Yeah, because, you know, if he'd been turned around, it would have been his left. But no, he was facing the hound, so it was his right. 
So basically, the hound helped hang two guys, and then Dark and Darian he kicked out the earth stump. The three he dudes who, in Dark's own words, disgraced the Brotherhood with Banner's name, him, him. So they did do. So they did attack them. The village, where the hound was, was. Fair enough. And, um, yeah. After her, those guys are hung. Not sure what they did with the boys. Hopefully, burnt them. Hmm. Or at least, put them somewhere where her, the dead can't get up again. You know? Just, just a thought. Um. So, Beric and Darian and the hound are like. Talk about Hoot. Hoot. What the hound is gonna do now? Oh, they were surprised to learn the hound actually made a friend, and he subsequently lost his friends. What? What? I find it interesting that the brother of Banners. Is saying, you know, there's shit going. They pretty much said there's shit going down in the north. We can be part of something bigger, which kind of makes me feel like they're gonna join up with with uh with the Starks because of course there's a re there's a Melisandre is with Jon Snow and of course Melisandre serves the Lord of Light. The Lord of Light brought back Jon Snow. You know. It'd be funny. You Beric Dundarian can say. Hey. Yeah. You come back once. Try coming back six times. And then you can. Claim to be special. Well. Seven. And then you can claim to be special. Because I have come back six times. Lozlings would be like. Fuck. Six times? I don't know. I don't know if they'd be in any way interested in that, but it sounds like the Brother of Banners and the Hound might be going north to join up with the, the Starks. Who knows? And maybe they're going to have the help of the Knights of the Vale. Hopefully, Baelish rides to save the day, you know, redeem yourself, dude, who, because you're pretty much on the wrong end of, of, of anger from hmm, Sansa, and obviously he wants to fuck Sansa, so no one's exactly gonna get to fuck her if she doesn't exactly like you. Considering people will be around to stop Baelish going anywhere near Sansa. Also, Brienne. I wonder if Brienne will make it into the north in time to make it a you know, a, a, a dominant, you know, a substantial impact in the fight against Ramsay Bolton. Hopefully, it'd be really disappointing after all this time. We've only seen Oathkeeper used really once in a fight. It'd be cool to see two who Valerian steel swords going ham, killing everyone. Long claw uh, uh, and an Oathkeeper. Her tag her. her. I'm so excited. Why do I have to wait a week? Why do we all have to wait a week? Why can't Game of Thrones be daily? Ah, screw you, Game of Thrones, for making me wait. Um. But yeah, I'll get more into the what's gonna happen in the next episode. A little in the near the end of the episode. I know they normally. 
do that. But next episode is just going to be... Mm, I can't not talk about what's going to happen next episode. Because I think we're all thoroughly pumped. So, a Marine death returned while the slavers are trying to destroy Marine. In, in she arrived on Drogon and she did not look happy. He, she's probably wondering why Marine is burning. Hey, and she's probably like, why is Marine burning? You know, like that's that's not supposed to be happening. In, in, I leave you in charge for. For a bit, and the place is fucking burning. What the hell? Also, where are the Dothraki and, and um? I keep forgetting that second son's guy's name. I don't. That guy from the second sons. The second son's guy. The guy who fucks Dan. Him. Where are they? Are they down on the ground fighting the masters or what? I I don't know. I guess we'll find out in episode 10 in two weeks. Interesting. Very interesting. Really infuriating. I guess interesting. Okay. And uh was I really next to Daya? I'm trying to remember. Bran wasn't in this episode again. That's two episodes in a row he was not in. And, and he was very... He wasn't that much in episode six. Like, pretty much since Hodor died, we've gone away from that story again. You know, either... Focus on the story or end it. It because it's taking up screen time when it's on the screen, and if you're not going to further it, then it's completely fucking pointless. Okay? Eh? Okay, we're in agreement. Good. So and uh, we didn't see either uh, John or Sansa. I wasn't expecting to see him. I don't think anyone was expecting to see him because their their episodes, their episodes next episode. But this episode was about an, a Stark child. It was about Aya Stark, right? And pretty much throughout the whole, we uh, first come to who Lady Crane. Mm, mm, shocker! I learned her name. Kind of pointless. This, uh, and I'll get to why in a minute. Um, but, you know, she took Aya's. As she took Aya's um, suggestion to heart, and she, act, you know, put a little more anger into her performance. Unfortunately, it was her last performance because as. After she heals, heals up and bandages it up, um, Aya, the wave kills her. So Lady Crane still dies. Shocker, I know. She was such an important character. It's like she's been there since season one. And how can she die? No, I'm just kidding. I think we were all expecting her to die or just vanish from the show and never show up again. But, yeah. Looks like that, uh, looks like the play is fucked because now both Lady Crane and, um, whatever the other actor's name who was playing Sansa, uh, uh, I think they're both dead. Or, well, we know Crane, we know Lady Crane is dead, but she said she fucked up the other one's face. She didn't say she Killed her though. Hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, Crane, Lady Crane died, and we see the 
epic chase scene between the wave and Arya. Arya takes a tumble down some stairs. Her's trying to get away from the wave. Heath. And she. In the last few mo in Her last ditch effort is she gets into her hideout from the end of episode 7. Mm, wait, no, episode 6. Episode 7 is the one where she got stabbed. I'm getting confused with the episodes, there were. Some of that stuff is kind of forgettable, but this is not forgettable. Oh, and she gets needle. Oh, and the wave's like, don't you know by now? That's useless. And as the wave is approaching, Haya, she cuts the candle. It goes dark. And then we cut to the house of black and white, where Jack and Hagar finds blood on the floor. He follows the blood to the face to the hall of faces he looks at the face that's been put the wife I was genuinely I was like do not be Aya do not end Aya's story like this in such a disappointing way but thank goodness Aya lived and she's like you know what I am not no one I am Aya Stark of Winterfell and I'm going home Problem, Maya, I think you missed the boat because you told the guy to leave the next morning and you were not there. So he might be already gone. Then again, you took the money back so he m wouldn't have any reason not to leave me. Maybe he's like, oh. Yes, she changed her mind and didn't want to go home. I guess I'll stay here until I'm ready to leave. Or she'll demand that they leave right now. Like, as soon as she gets to someone with a boat, she's like, Here's some money, take me home. Um, um, or take me to Westeros. So, obviously, she, I, I can't see her. You know, I, I'm guessing when we catch back up with Aya, she might already be back in Westeros. Because, you know, she's already said she's going home. They don't have to show her on a boat to emphasize that. Okay? You have to emphasize that she wanted to go to Bravos when she was going to Bravos, But... So we didn't, you know, fear that, you know, she's stuck in Westeros with, like, fucking every the enemy he ever was looking for her, 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 but now she's going back to Westeros, and episode 10, we know it's going to contain, because it wasn't in this episode, something with the phrase in the Lannisters, I am hoping, I go is dropped right near the twins. She goes straight into Alfred Castle, sneaks up on him, and kills the old fuck dead. And, and, and tells him that the North remembers. That would be satisfying. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it would be satisfying if it does. Anyway. Episode 9. As those were my thoughts on episode 8. Let's talk about what's going to happen in episode 9. Episode 9s are normally very interesting. I mean, Eddard is killed in episode 9 of season 1. In episode 9 of season 3, of course, we have the Red Wedding. Um, Hard Home, I think, was episode 9. Might have been episode 8. I could be wrong about that. Um, I can't remember the uh, nine of eps of season two. I have to go back and watch that. Um, someone leave it in the comment section below. Oh, can't be that interesting. Or I'm just spacing out. Maybe no. Hard home was definitely f a season. 
season four. What was it, season? No, it was season five. It was season five because the very next episode is when Jon Snow gets stabbed. Four is the fight against the Wildlings. Yeah, the fight against the Wildlings is episode four, season nine. Um, episode four, season nine. It's season four, episode nine. Um, but yeah. But the next episode is titled The Battle of the Bastards, aka Snowball. Jon Snow versus Ramsey. He. He. And this is the episode all of us have been waiting for because it's gonna be the episode Ramsey Bolton finally dies. Fortunately, I'm expecting us to lose Rickon. Like. He has no story purpose. I mean, even if Sansa doesn't take over as Lord of Winterfell, John will, because John is older than Rickon. Even if he's a bastard, people will be like, "Let's just follow the older her guy who just damn near or gave his life and you know formed a bond between Northmen and Wildlings to get." this place back and let's not follow an eight year old kid. Yeah, let's not do that. Although maybe Leon Mormon will be like, yo, follow kids. It's Bear Island is led by me. I'm ten year old ten years old and I was here the whole time. I would <laughs> it would be really you know, I'm I'm expecting a lot of depths. But Rickon and Ramsey, I'm hoping, are the only, you know, kind of major characters. I don't, like, it'd be really disappointing if Tormund is killed before the big fight against the White Walkers. I, I, I don't see that happening. I think Tormund will live. Jon Snow just came back from the dead, so it'd be really disappointing if he goes off and dies again. Sansa, well, who... You know, it'd be, you know, her story is kind of over once they retake Winterfell. I guess they could then turn their attention to the phrase, but um, I'm interested to see if they can convince the Wildlings. Yeah, thanks for helping us retake Winterfell. Now let's turn our attention to other her enemies, the phrase. We have to go to a bit south. They're like, yo. We took Winterfell. Let's, 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 let's bed down in these castles and let's wait until, oh, 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 winter fucking comes and then let's fucking kill Winter. I, I just can't see the Wildlings being like, yeah, let's go kill some Freys. Because I can't imagine Tormund like, who the fuck are the Freys? No, I, I just can't see it. Maybe, you know, I don't. I don't see something happening between the Starks and the Freys. At least not this season, unless Aya kills the Freys when she comes back in episode ten. Maybe who knows? I guess we'll see. But uh, yeah, episode nine should be unreal. Let me know what you thought of episode 8 Eat in the comment section below. And what are your her hopes for episode 9? Who do you think will live? Who do you think will die? Do you think Rickon will survive? I don't. I think Ramsey's gonna kill him. I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the guys we saw on the crosses in the preview. Which is probably gonna be in the next episode. Just, you know, we'll see. But yeah, yeah that was my review of episode 8 of C and 6 of Game of Thrones. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. 
then like this video if you did enjoy it subscribe if you're new to the channel oh also you do not miss any for for uploads from me he and until next time I hope you all have a very very nice day peace